Imagine this. You're standing alone in an abandoned observation post. It's perched at the summit of Olympus Mons, the tallest volcano on Mars. In front of you, a glass dome stretches out. Beyond it, a vast pitch black sky. Millions of rays of light streak silently across the emptiness, like messages from a distant ancient past. But nothing comes back. No response, no signal, no conversation. The universe, with its hundreds of billions of galaxies and countless planets, remains silent. So silent, it forces us to ask something unsettling. What if we never find life beyond Earth? Is that a truth we have to accept? Or are we misunderstanding the cosmos? Is it absence or is it a message? Here at Astro, we don't just search for answers. We're learning how to listen to the silence, to what the universe hasn't said. Because sometimes, what we don't discover might be the most important clue of all. And if that's true, then maybe this is only the beginning. So let's keep going deeper into the mystery in the next episode. Let's take a step back and look at what we've been doing and what we've found. For more than three decades, humanity has been reaching deeper and deeper into the cosmos, hoping to find something, a signal, a tris, even the faintest hint that we're not alone. We've built machines like Kepler, which first confirmed that planets beyond our solar system are not just possible, they're common. We've used the powerful eyes of Hubble and now the James Webb Space Telescope. But these aren't just instruments. They're memory banks, digital archives of ancient light, broken down photon by lonely photon, all in search of something that doesn't quite fit. Something strange, something alive, a planetary atmosphere, for instance, rich in both methane and oxygen like Earth's, could be a clue. So we scan the skies, we comb through the data, thousands of exoplanets, one by one. But each time, the results come back cold, cold and silent, just like the space they traveled through. Today, we've discovered over 7,000 exoplanets. Some are Earth-sized, some orbit stars in the so-called habitable zone, a place where liquid water could exist and yet, not a single one has shown an atmosphere that clearly suggests life. No chemical fingerprints, no biological markers, no artificial signals, nothing that says, and here, just imagine that, millions of eyes is staring out into the void, and the only thing we hear is the echo of our own curiosity. So what does it mean? Are we looking in the wrong places? Or could it be that life itself is far rarer than we ever dared to believe? And then a strange idea enters the picture. What if this absence of evidence isn't just silence? What if it's data? Let's explore that thought in the next episode. Let's think differently about what nothing actually means. Usually when we find nothing, we treat it as a failure, a dead end, a reason to wonder if the search was even worth it. But in science, especially in astronomy, nothing can sometimes be everything. Take the work of Dr. Daniel Angerhausen and his team at ETH Zurich. Instead of just asking, did we find life? They asked something deeper. If we find nothing, what does that actually tell us? To explore that, they used a method called Bayesian analysis. It's a kind of probability model, a way to update our beliefs based on new information. So they ran a simulation. What if we surveyed 40 planets, or even 80, all with Earth-like conditions? And what if, after all of that, we still heard nothing? No signals, no life, no data except silence. Statistically, if those planets are truly Earth-like, 
and yet show no signs of life, then the chances that life exists on such planets might drop below 20%, maybe even under 10%. Now, stop for a moment and really let that sink in. In a galaxy filled with hundreds of billions of planets, 10% might sound hopeful, but from the perspective of the only species currently listening, us, that's a sobering thought, because it suggests something profound Life might be so rare, it may never happen twice. And if that's true, then silence isn't just absence. It's a discovery. It changes what we thought we knew and echoes one of the most haunting questions in astronomy. If life is common, why haven't we seen any signs of it? That's the Fermi paradox. But instead of retreating into doubt, scientists like Engerhausen are using that silence not to give up, but to measure the odds, even without a single direct clue. They're redefining nothing as a new kind of data, a data point that whispers, this is what life's absence looks like. So maybe the real question isn't whether the universe is silent. Maybe it's this. What if the universe has been whispering to us all along and we just haven't learned how to listen yet? Let's step back and ask ourselves something uncomfortable. Imagine this. You're holding a detailed map of a city. It's precise. It's clear. It shows every street, every landmark. But you're lost in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. No matter how carefully you follow that map, you're never going to find your way. And that might be exactly what we're doing in the search for extraterrestrial life. For decades, We've imagined alien life as a kind of reflection of our own, something Earth-like, something familiar. We assume it needs liquid water, oxygen, mild temperatures, and comfortable conditions by our standards. But what if life doesn't need any of those things? What if there are organisms that breathe methane, thrive in acidic oceans, or hide deep beneath the frozen crust of distant moons. Not long ago, we believed no life could survive near boiling hot hydrothermal vents at the bottom of Earth's oceans. And then we found microbes, flourishing in total darkness, extreme pressure, and scalding heat. So who's to say alien life has to feel familiar? Astrobiologists have a name for this possibility extremophile life, and in some theories, even non-carbon-based biology. Some scientists are now calling for a radical shift. Let's stop looking only for another Earth. Instead, let's expand what we mean by a habitable planet. Maybe it's not just about water. Maybe it's any environment that has enough energy to support structure, complexity, and the exchange of information. Because when we search only for what we know, we're not just limiting our tools, we're limiting our imagination. It's a trap, a deep one, and scientists even have a name for it. Earth bias. We may be so focused on life as we understand it that we're blind to life as it actually exists. It could be out there, right in front of us, and we just don't recognize it. So maybe the real issue isn't the lack of data. Maybe the real problem is the question we've been asking all along. And if we dared to ask a different question, maybe, just maybe, the answer would finally change. Let's imagine something simple and haunting. You're standing in a vast pitch black room. You can't see the walls. You uh, can't hear a sound. And in your hand, you're holding a tiny flashlight. It's your only tool, your only way to search for someone, a friend who might be hiding somewhere in the dark. You don't know where they are. You don't know what they look like. You only know they might exist. That is the heart of a groundbreaking mission called LIFE, the Large Interferometer for Exoplanets, developed by researchers at ETH. 
LIFE is a proposed space-based interferometer, a telescope built from multiple mirrors, working together in perfect harmony. Its mission, to do something we've never done before, not just see distant planets, but read the chemical fingerprints of their atmospheres. LIFE will scan for specific gases, oxygen, methane, carbon dioxide, or even stranger patterns, chemical imbalances that shouldn't exist unless something alive is constantly creating them. Imagine this. If life scans a planet and detects both oxygen and methane in the same atmosphere, that's not just interesting. That's a cosmic alarm bell because under normal chemistry, those gases destroy each other quickly. They shouldn't coexist unless something, something biological keeps producing both. But here's the powerful truth. Even if life finds nothing, it's not a failure. Every empty result becomes a clue. Each atmosphere it rules out becomes a data point, a step closer, a path eliminated, a clearer view of where to look next. Like a treasure hunter with a worn, uncertain map, Every patch of ground already dug brings you closer to the place that hasn't been touched yet. So in that way, life isn't just searching for life. It's helping us ask better questions. Questions that might change how we search, how we listen, and maybe how we understand our place in all of this. So if life really is that rare, if this planet truly is one of the only places where the universe lights up, then maybe just maybe, the silence around us isn't emptiness, it's contrast, and we are the spark. Let's talk about something that sounds simple, but feels infinite. The universe, as far as we can tell, might be endless. Hundreds of billions of galaxies, each one with hundreds of billions of planets. Numbers so large, they slip straight through the edges of imagination. And yet, what if in all that vastness, there's no one else? What if every telescope, every problem, every signal we've ever tracked only confirms one quiet truth? We are the only spark of life we know. That thought sounds cold, even a little heartbreaking, but maybe, there's another way to see it. Maybe the silence isn't emptiness. Maybe it's clarity. Because if, across all probability, across all the chaos, across every roll of the cosmic dice, life has emerged only here, then it's not ordinary. It's sacred. Not because it's everywhere, but because it's so rare, it almost didn't happen at all. We may be living inside a single fleeting moment of cosmic magic. Maybe not the first, maybe not the last, but perhaps the only one unfolding right now, right here. You're breathing, listening, feeling, thinking in a universe that is otherwise almost completely silent. And that doesn't make you small, that makes you living proof that life is possible. Even in an infinite cosmos, even if we're just one lonely flame, flickering in the dark, and from that flame comes wonder, comes emotion, comes the will to explore and understand the very universe that gave birth to us. So maybe the question isn't, is anyone else out there? Maybe it's this, what will we do with the precious life we already have? The universe is still silent, but maybe, just maybe, that silence isn't the end of the story. Maybe it's only the pause before a symphony. We haven't yet learned how to hear.